Angelina Jolie, Julia Roberts, Margot Robbie, we can't deny that these have become some of the most desired smiles in the world. But is this just based on the fact they're attractive women? Or is there something going on scientifically and mathematically that we can apply to smile designs as to why we love these smiles so much? I'm here to tell you as a dentist what we look for and why we love these smiles so much. But before I go on, please do not forget to subscribe and like to my channel so you can continue to get lots of amazing information. Okay, let's take a look at Angelina. She's got an amazing smile. Her teeth are actually not perfectly straight, but why do we love it? Look, how many teeth does she show on smiling? In fact, look at Julia and Margot. Count their teeth, take a moment. If we count round, we can see at least 10 to 12 teeth on smiling. What do we call this? This is called having full buccal corridors. So when we smile, we wanna see the back teeth. If we have narrow or deficient buccal corridors, it can look like dark tunnels on the side of the mouth. Don't worry guys, I want a caveat. If you don't have this, it does not matter. It doesn't state attractiveness. It's just something that they have and something that we like to see. You can correct the buccal corridors a few ways, by having braces to expand the smile and make it wider. You can also have composite veneers or porcelain veneers to create more volume on the side teeth. Orthodontics does have a limit, of course. You can't expand to the nth degree, so your teeth are just gonna fall out, but as much as we can go. But is that all? No. So let's take another look, maybe at Julia. Her teeth are parallel to her lower lip. What does that mean? It means that when she smiles, the teeth are actually following the line of the lower lip. Again, that's something that we wanna to aspire to have. So if you've got teeth that are all even levels, you can have it corrected with composite bonding or veneers. And sometimes the levels of the teeth need to be corrected by alleviating crowding through braces or something like that. But it may need something else as well. But ideally we want the teeth to follow the lower lip. Is that all? No, there's a few other things going on. Really importantly also is the shapes of the teeth. The shapes of the teeth is something that the eye notices and there's science behind it. Ever heard of the golden proportion or the golden ratio? It's existed since basically the beginning of time. In fact, Leonardo da Vinci used it and so many scientists, mathematicians, artists. And it has been found that it's a proportion that's aesthetically pleasing to the human eye. And the human eyes like things, like to look at things that adhere to the golden proportion. That relates to teeth too. So we look at what we call the height width ratio. So the width of the teeth, the height of the teeth. We can work out what the golden proportion is. Are they symmetrical? Does it complement the teeth next door? By using this, we can actually see whether teeth need to be made bigger or smaller relative to the other teeth. And again, Angelina, Margot and Julia have really nice height width ratios. So the shapes of their teeth are what we like. But of course, guys, this may not suit you. What suits them isn't right for you. You don't have the same lips, the same face structure, the same height. So different shapes adhere well to different people. Certainly some people look better with smaller teeth. And it brings me on to another thing, the color of the teeth. We do like teeth that are slightly whiter and they've got naturally white teeth. They may have gone on to have teeth whitening, but maybe not. Again, color of the teeth can be corrected by having teeth whitening. If that doesn't work well for you, something like composite veneers or porcelain veneers that can mask the color. So these are some of the things that we look at. Also, what about the angles of the teeth? Angulation matters. Basically, you wanna see teeth that when you draw a line down the middle are almost following down to your belly button and then the side teeth start to taper in and follow that line as well at a slight angle. Yeah, it's a thing. So if you have teeth that are really flared out or going in different directions, these angles will change and won't go down to your belly button the way that they should. So again, we can correct that in several ways and obviously the best way is doing that orthodontically. Let's look at another thing, embrasures. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, embrasures refers to the gaps, but I'm not talking about the traditional gaps that you're thinking of, like in the middle of your teeth or through multiple teeth, but actually the actual gaps really close to the 
incisal, i.e. the bottom of the teeth, with the tooth next door. If you have smaller gaps, it's a more Hollywood look, and that's towards these bits of the teeth. And where you have larger gaps, it is less Hollywood, but also you don't want too much of a large gap because sometimes people think, mm, I just don't like the way that this is looking. So there's loads of different things going on. The other thing is, is that their center lines are almost coincident with their face. However, I need to state that center lines actually don't matter that much if it's not a huge discrepancy and the lines are straight. So what matters more is something that we call a cant. If we draw a line down the middle of the nose, and by the way, have you ever noticed this on Tom Cruise? His center line starts like here. But the reason why many people don't notice or haven't noticed when he's acting is because the lines are straight. They're not canted, i.e. they're not to an angle. So actually the human eye doesn't notice a center line shift for up to three or four millimeters as long as it's straight. So there's lots to think about. Let's have a little summary. Full buckle corridors, teeth parallel to the lower lip. We've got teeth at the right shapes that follow the golden proportions of the teeth. We've got a nice color of the teeth. The center lines are almost coincident with the face, but if they're not, it doesn't matter too much, just as long as the lines are straight. And we've got minimal embrasures or sometimes larger embrasures if we want a more natural look. Now, as I said, I love a quirky smile. I love a diastema. I love a little bit of a quirk. As I said, Angelina has a little bit of crowding. So please don't go away and think, oh my God, I need to get this done. You don't. But it's better to understand what we like, what we don't like and what's suitable. Julia's teeth, Angelina's teeth may not suit you. So you can find out what suits you. We will mock up designs of your teeth and we can do that together and decide what's right for you and what we can correct. Now, I hope that helps and you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like to my channel so you can continue to get lots of information that you need about all things teeth and lifestyle.